Hello, everybody. I think we are live out there in uh, internet land. And I wanted to make sure that everything's working. I'm testing it and it is working. So we're live at launchcart.com slash live on our YouTube channel. We're live on our Facebook groups. We're live everywhere. So welcome to Leadership is a Lifestyle Training. I'm very happy to introduce to you one of our shareholders, investors, one of our biggest purport, um, com, what's the word I'm trying to think of? One of our biggest supporters of LaunchCart and what we're doing and how we're trying to make an impact in the world with e-commerce. So let me bring him on real quick. Everyone, please welcome Jeff Hilofsky. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Greg. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. So we got the technology working last week. We had a little bit of a hiccup, but here we are. And you've gone through that whole technology, uh, you know, sure. and, and you got it going. And we're out there live all over the place. You don't know if there's like six people or six million watching, but it's probably closer to six. But I don't know. <laughs> hey, I want to let everyone know um, I'm a personal development junkie. I really believe that the most important things in life uh, is your skill set, your knowledge, your mindset, and what you do to improve that on a daily basis because it helps you with your relationships, your business, your success, your financial income. And when I met Jeff and he shared with me what he does, he's a former military man. So thank you for your service, Jeff. You're welcome. My and pleasure. He, he shared with me his passion of t talking and teaching children uh, in high schools uh, about the importance of having a, a, a leadership as a lifestyle mentality. And he started sharing this curriculum with me and what he was doing. I'm like, you got to teach this to our launch cart people and to all of our friends and everybody. We got to record it. We got to put it out there. We got to let, let, let you share your wisdom with the world. So that's what's going to happen today. And Jeff, I'm going to pass it off to you. I'm going to go off the screen and let you take it over. And I'm going to pull your screen up here, uh, add, add this slide to the screen, and then I'm going to move you there, and I'm going to disappear. And you take it away, Jeff. It's all you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Greg. It's such a pleasure to, uh, to finally work out the, the, uh, <laughs> the technology and also to share this message. I think that, you know, in these times of turmoil, um, we can certainly understand that leadership is important. Let's talk a little bit before we uh, before we get started with the program tonight, a little bit about leadership as a, as a lifestyle. And so, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, boy, this is great. Hmm, here it is. <laughs> Sorry, didn't have my clicker. All right, so... Um, Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. So Greg, help me out. How do I advance the slides? I, I had to come back just to just to be with you. So yeah. um, just with your mouse button. Okay. Well, that's not if you right here. or page up, page, page up, page down. There you go. All right. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully this will work. There we go. All right. So sorry for that that glitch. Uh, for some reason, my, my little clicker isn't working. But this lecture series is really designed to fill your leadership toolbox with uh, with principles and practices. So it's not just a one time good deal. Uh, hopefully we'll have a, a way to develop your leadership toolbox over time. And we're going to wipe the slate clean. This allows you to wipe your slate clean and build a new foundation of leadership that you can carry with you through so many things, so many aspects of your life. And uh, we're, I'm excited to bring that to you. Uh, the uh, recurrent theme is to understand mindset is crucial to your success. So I'll be mentioning that over and over again tonight and just uh, have you uh, listen to the opportunities that that can bring to you. Um, and, you know, I want you to be bold and be bold enough to summon the courage to take action. Think back when you were a little kid and the very first time you went off a diving board whether it's the high dive or the low dive, and you approach the, the edge of the diving board and you're looking down at the water and you weren't sure, you weren't sure, you weren't sure, then finally you took that step. You hit the water, came back up, said, yeah, this is it, I can do this. So that's the kind of bold uh, courage you need to do to take, take action. So we're gonna talk about unlocking the leader within you, and I'm excited to bring this to you. Uh, commit with me. Today, today is the day you begin to make your future greater than your past. So this is it. We're starting today, right now. So whatever is in your past, you can use it and learn from it. But today's the day you start. 
to make this future and you're going to make it greater and greater as time goes on. Today, you're going to learn the cause and effect of why the world is crying out for quality leaders. And isn't that true? And you're going to learn dad's seven practical uh, leadership principles. I'm dad, so it is what it is. And the impact on the, the, on the world of the power of one. Let's get started. So why is it that we need leadership? Why? Well, John Maxwell, leadership guru to presidents and kings and heads of state, according to him, he said leadership is influence. It's plain and simple. Leadership is influence. Well, I appreciate John's uh, definition, and certainly he digs deeper in all his writings on that, but I'm going to uh, propose something else. I think effective leadership is people-centric problem solving, using unmistakably clear values, serving those you lead with respect and compassion. So if we have leaders to lead, what needs to be changed? Well, let's go through a few things. Outbreaks of violence on our streets. We have had violence in our cities and many of our big cities now for over a year. And the effect of that has been, unfortunately, lives have been lost. Homes have been destroyed. Billions and billions of dollars in property damages and businesses have been shuttered. The dreams of business owners completely shuttered. And so unfortunately that has a ripple effect. And the ripple effect is, is that all those things like little waves affect the community in so many ways and they have lasting effects. So I'm hoping that we can change that. What else needs to be changed? Drugs, drugs are pouring into our country, absolutely pouring into our country. The effect is millions of our citizens are being addicted. Lives are ruined. Families are ruined. It strains resources, first responders, emergency room people. It, 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 it uh, strains the resources of schools and other, other organizations. So we need to see what we can do for that. What else needs to be changed? Well, never in my life have I experienced a time where we have what is called cancel culture, cancel culture and public shaming. So if for some reason you don't agree with me, there's an opportunity then for you to kind of gang up on me and or whoever and uh, take it out on us, if you will, because we have a different opinion. It used to be that we could talk about differences and now no social media canceled everything canceled. You can't talk to me. You will disavow. I exist, whatever. And, uh, you know, there's an effect to that, too. And the effect it is that it has divided our nation. What else needs to be changed? <clears throat> well, there's turmoil in the families. Hmm. There's uh, 13 million, 14 million, I'm sorry, 14 million single parents. And the effect of that is, is that the 14 million single moms 86% of those are single moms. The 14, the 86% the of those have reduced uh, lifestyles in most cases. Some choose to be single moms and that's okay. But the, the ones who don't are often live paycheck to paycheck. And it's hard to help a child with education when you're trying to, to pay the bills. All right, something again happened, Greg this technology yay all right here we go <laughs> sorry about that okay what else needs to be changed well our education system is in turmoil we have plenty of great teachers hard-working teachers we have plenty of wonderful schools but here's the truth the truth is a PISA study ranks United States 38th in math and 20 or 24th in science now how is it that we can remain competitive in the world when we're 38th and 24th. Most people probably don't know that the average cost to educate one student, let me emphasize that, one student is over $13,000 a year. 
So when, as a business person, you think, well, is that a good return on my investment, 38th and 24th? Most would say no. So let's, let's uh, find some solutions. What can we build on? I believe that we are problem solvers and see things as they can be and should be to make the world a better place. And we have wonderful leaders, wonderful people like Elon Musk, Peter Diamandis, and others that take action to make a difference. I believe we're generous and kind. We're the first to respond to natural disasters like hurricane damage, flooding, and even food emergencies. And usually it's our military that shoulders that burden. We're the first in with our military with supplies to, to make things better. And the effect of that is it reduces human suffering and improves the lives of millions of people worldwide. I believe we've hit the lottery in life just by being citizens of the greatest, freest nation in the world. And the effect of our melting pot nation blends the cultural differences and experiences to make us stronger. So many uh, lives and cultures can be blended and that blending allows people from different ideas, different points of view to share their ideas, to collaborate, to make a better product. I believe we have a great work ethic. We work hard with determination and we get great results. And the effect is we've developed work systems and processes that are copied all over the world, sometimes legally and unfortunately, sometimes illegally. But I guess we're working on that. But in any event, we lead the world in these processes and people want American products. So history does not relate any other nation that has become a movement, and we are a movement, a beacon of freedom and democracy for people of all races, colors, and creeds. Are we perfect? No, we're not, but we're a work in progress. Our country is a trailblazer. We're at the tip of the spear of liberty. We have created a system where opportunity for individual achievement is possible, no matter who you are, or where you started in life. So how do we change the stuff that needs changing? And how do we embrace the good stuff? Well, you need to learn to lead yourself. The hardest person, the hardest person to lead is yourself. And it's necessary to develop skill sets. Number one, success is based on leadership, not management. Management is systems and processes. And all those, those systems and processes are important and they guide workers and effort makers to do the job and the job they want to do. But success of that organization is based on the leadership, not on the management. Number two, work to define your target. What are your goals, your mission? What is your who, your how, and maybe most importantly, your why? Do your research and do your homework without putting in the time to research and understand your processes and understand your product or understand what you're trying to accomplish. You'll be like a Trojan horse. You may be the leader, but when you lead, you'll be leading yourself. It's important that you be an expert in what you want to become. Number four, organize your team and define your action plan. You need A players, A team players on the field for you in whatever business you're in, whatever organization you're in, whatever school setting or whatever. Fill your team with A players because A, to A players generally bring A team results. Look at the New York Yankees. Well, they have like 30 world championships. Nobody even comes close. And why is that? They invest, they develop. They invest in their players, they develop them and they have the A-team mentality. In the military, one of the famous things is, uh, famous sayings is, if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. And how true is that? So set up milestone charts, set up suspense dates, action plans, and measure them. And when you measure, that gives you the opportunity then to change course. 
Your plans don't have to be a straitjacket and confine you to just a certain outcome. If you find that it's not working, you have the opportunity and perhaps even the obligation to stop, reassess, and move forward with a different plan or slightly different plan. And number six, when you serve your people, when you train them and invest in training and inspire them, this will energize them and they will follow your lead, period. So why is that important? Because you know what? Our world is changing. The usual and typical jobs are being replaced with digital age jobs. Jobs, honestly, most, most people don't even know about. Cloud specialists, digital marketing, working in fintech, and internet entrepreneurs. 10, 15 years ago, these jo jobs did not exist. But that's not all. The challenge for leadership is, is to embrace new technology. Embrace it. Understand it. Prepare workers to work with it. Because we are trying to solve the problems that don't even exist. Tomorrow's problems. And unless we're prepared, unless we embrace the technology and in fact grow with that technology, there is no way, no way we will remain competitive. The world is shrinking. Everyone knows that. How is it possible that you can face some FaceTime somebody in India or Australia? How is it possible to do that? Technology. We are changing at the pace of technology. So we need to embrace it, understand it as best we can and move forward. But we need a foundation. That's for sure. And this is where dad's rules for life come, come in. My kids have heard these over and over and over again their whole life. So number one, life is tough. Get over it. Life isn't fair. That's true. Life is competition. Embrace the word competition. Live a life of gratitude. J&D, job not done. Number six, always, always take the high road. And number seven, never, never forget the first six rules. Let's break them down. Number one, life is tough. Understand that anything worthwhile is hard to obtain. You're swimming upstream. It's an uphill climb. You're pushing a rope. Meet the challenges head on with the best attitude, action, and passion. Set your mind. Have a positive mindset and move forward. Number two, life isn't fair. Listen, we can all agree that we're created equal, but there is no guarantee our results in life will be equal, period. Produce results, get the reward. Produce the results to get the reward. Let me say that again. Produce the results to get the reward. Number three, life is competition. Like it or not, we begin to compete at an early age. We compete in school, sports, for jobs, careers. Embrace the word competition. It is not a dirty word. Competition does not mean you have to destroy your opponent. Competition means you're competing against yourself. Make yourself the best you can be. Put your own A team together inside your mind, inside your body. Make your body strong, make your mind strong. And look forward to the challenge. Plan. Prepare, execute, move forward. Number four, live a life of gratitude. My friend Greg Greider says, when you wake up every morning as I do, have an attitude of gratitude and tell somebody you love them. Let's look at that and break it down a little bit further. So you walk into work, you're grumpy. You spilled coffee on your shirt. You don't like what's on your desk, so you, you push it off your desk. I'm not dealing with this today. Somebody's on the phone for you. I don't care. Not interested. See you later. Grump, grump, grump. Versus, good morning. How are you doing? You know what? I got a little coffee stain on, uh, <laughs> on my shirt today, and I'm embarrassed about it. But you know what? It's going to be a great day. And I hope everybody's ready to make value for everyone else around them today. That's exciting. One of my favorite saying is live a life of abundance so that every day is a holiday and every meal is a feast. You can see that mindset. You can see it working. You can see yourself changing and feel it inside you when you embrace a life of gratitude. Job not done. 
live, strive to live a life of continuous improvement. There's a story about that. I was watching an NBA playoff game years ago. Kobe Bryant, Los Angeles Lakers versus someone. It doesn't really matter who it was. But they won the game. Kobe had his usual amazing self. He had a bunch of points. He had a bunch of steals. He had a bunch of assists, a bunch of rebounds. He was awesome. He was all over the court. And so he's interviewed after the game and said, well, Kobe, you're up two to zero in a four-game playoff set. You must be pretty excited. You must be pretty happy. Kobe looked at the reporter and said, happy? What's there to be happy about? Job not done. He said, I know that we're a good team, but I also know the opponent is a good team, and they are going to try to magnify our weaknesses so we have to continue to work on our strengths. The only way we will prevail if we play all four quarters uh, magnifying our strengths. Job not done. Number six, always, always take the high road. Integrity, service, excellence. That's the model of the Air Force. And we live that. And in fact, um, my kids, they're in their 30s now, uh, successful in their own right happy, good citizens, there is usually not a year that goes by, even as they advance in age, that they don't tell my wife and I, you know what? I took the high road. I took the high road. What they're doing is saying that they're living a life of integrity. They're not willing to punch down. They're living a life of excellence and they're trying to serve others in the best way they can. My mother, God bless her, used to say, you know, you don't want to wrestle with a pig in the mud because both of you get dirty, but only one of you likes it. How true is that? How true is that? So listen, always take the high road. Always. All right. Number seven, never forget the first six rules. So you think, what? That's a crazy thing. Why would he? Why? Why would he just do something silly like never forget the first six rules? Well, here's the answer. This is your foundation. This is your bedrock. This is the way to go. And I think it's important that we understand these things. And so the key is never forget those first six rules. I believe in the power of one. So what does that mean? What, what is that? Listen, leaders look for an opportunity to lead the power of one. I believe one person of courage can become a majority and influence the lives of others. Absolutely. Declare your intentions to lead. If it has to be, you know what? Let it begin with me. How many times have we seen a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers down by four points with 38 seconds left to go, ball on the five-yard line, 95 yards for a touchdown? He can't win with a field goal. He can't tie with a field goal. How many times have we seen him put the whole team on his back and carry them? Listen, if it has to be, here's the situation we're dealt with. We're Fourth and forever, we got 38 seconds to go, and we're on the five-yard line, and we need to go 95 yards. Let's go. If it has to be, I'm going to lead you. Let's go. Let's get it done. So there, uh, we're going to play this video now about the power of one, and you see that this is a child starring in this video, and um, let's see how it goes. What are you doing on a starfish? I'm throwing it back into the ocean. Why? Because if I don't, then I'm a bot. Look at all of them. You can't possibly make a difference. Made a difference for that one.
That's awesome. Can you do the page down video? I'm sorry? Can you do the page down again, or is it not letting you switch that screen? Sometimes with the video, it's, uh, not, let it's me hard switch. to go to the next screen. Yeah, it's not letting me switch the screen. Oh. Not ready for prime time, are we? <laughs> you, might, you, you might have to hit like escape and go to the next screen, or if you hit the page down button, though, it should it should take you to the next page. Mm, well, technology, what a concept! Hit the escape button and come out of the PowerPoint, and then go to the next screen, and then 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 do the slideshow from the next screen. Start from that slideshow. All right, all right, good deal. From current slide, there we go. All right, so now uh, we're back. Sorry about that. And we're gonna talk about the power of one. And uh, you saw in that, that uh, video, that the little girl made a difference. It made a difference to one starfish, made a difference to hundreds of starfish that she did. And she even influenced the older gentleman who was uh, a, well, a younger gentleman, I guess, in my case, uh, to, um, to, to pick up the star, starfish and uh, throw another one back because it saved one. So believe in the power of one. In 1960, John Kennedy said, we're going to put a man on the moon. And no one believed him. In this de decade, we're going to put a man on the moon. What a moonshot opportunity that was. And yet no one believed him. Nine years later, July 20th, 1969, a man landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Well, Neil Armstrong energized the whole nation. He lifted the spirits up and he, in fact, this was such an immense world changing event, but he was honored by presidents and kings. And he was honored with ticker tape parades uh, in the canyons of Madison Avenue in downtown New York. Speeches and, and just accolades, TV appearances. He and Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. And what, what he did and how he showed his leadership though, was this next point, a letter of gratitude. After all, the hubbub have kind of died down. He penned a letter to editors of major newspapers. And the importance of that is, is that the major newspapers at the, at the time were just as equally important as television in bringing people the news, maybe in fact more important. And what he did was he said, thank you. Thank you to his team. Thank you to his fellow astronauts. Thank you to the engineers, the mathematicians. Thank you to the sheet metal workers. Thank you to the mission planners. Thank you to the custodians. Thank you to the cafeteria ladies. He thanked everybody and he understood and he let it be known that it was a team effort and countless hours, some people working 24 hours a day to get this done on time and to make sure it was safe for he, astronaut Aldrin and astronaut Collins, the power of one. Another example of power one, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He led the civil rights movement and his effect was peaceful protest eventually changed the laws in this country. The Civil Rights Act of 1968 was passed shortly after his death. His speeches, his words, let us not judge my children by the color of their skin, but the content of their character ring today and are valid today and relevant. And that's where we need to understand how the power of one, one man, one person, Neil Armstrong, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Rosa Parks, George Washington, many people can list them, boom, boom, boom. And they all had that power of one. Well, guess what? We have that same power within us. We have that same power to do what we need to do to help people. So, you know, but leadership is complicated. So, and I, and I con I just don't have the time to be a leader. Well, let's assume we all work about 40 hours a week in our job or career. So how is it possible? How is it possible we find time to become more? Remember, mindset, a good attitude is contagious. Dan Sullivan says, you know, how you decide to use your time now will define your future. 168 hours a week, that's 24 times seven. 50 to 56 hours of sleep. That's probably true for most people. Now, let me pause right here for just a second because I want to talk to you about opportunity. So when we have, we have an opportunity every time we go to bed at night, when we set that uh, alarm device, whatever it is, your cell phone, some kind of clock, some kind of whatever it is, 
um, we have that opportunity. We have the opportunity to decide in advance that we're going to make a difference in the world tomorrow. So instead of saying, well, we've got so many hours of sleep or whatever, and I can't, oh, I'm too tired to get up, da, 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 wine, 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 life isn't fair, life is tough, get over it. You set your opportunity clock and wake up energized to help people, to multiply and add, multiply the value you add to others every day. How important is that? So, all right, so let's just, let's resume. Eight hours of eating, 50 to 55 hours of working, preparing for work, getting to work, five for social activities, 20 for miscellaneous, uh, you know, and so what's that add up to be? Holy smokes, 144 hours, that's it. What? 144 hours, so now, how is it that you can control, and you do have control of your time, the extra 24 hours to become more? My daughter tells me all the time, time is the biggest thief. Well, she's right. And she's right again. 144 hours. So what books or articles can you read? Lectures can you attend? Podcasts can you listen to? Online courses. What can you do to improve your leadership skills? Let's negotiate. You know, 24 hours, that's pretty tight. That's way too much. Well, how about if we take 17 hours and give them to whatever category you want or just to sit there watching TV? How about seven hours? Can you do an hour a day? That investment, one hour a day will pay great dividends to you and enable you not only to add value to yourself, but add value to others. You can multiply the effect of adding value just by increasing your knowledge about leadership. When you increase your value, you increase the value you can add to others. Think about it. All right, it's time to sum it up. Effective leadership, people-centric, problem-solving, with using unmistakably clear values, serving those you lead with respect and compassion. That's what effective leadership is. When leadership becomes your habit, it becomes your passion. When it becomes your passion, you can make it your lifestyle. Let me say that one more time. When leadership becomes your habit, it becomes your passion. And when it becomes your passion, you can make it your lifestyle. Leaders can influence one person, a group, a school, a community, or a nation. All of us have unlimited power within the power of one. Unlock the leader within you. It's been my pleasure to spend some time with you and share my passion for leadership. And I hope you got something out of it. If you would like to contact me in some way, I'd be happy to hear from you. Leadership is a lifestyle.us. The website is uh, still under progress. It's probably about 90% done. And I want to shout out Lane Sennett for doing a wonderful job. She's been working tirelessly and listening to all the, my suggestions and nodding her head, rolling her eyes and saying, I'll see what I can do. So she is awesome. And I appreciate uh, her goodness. And you can contact uh, contact me, uh, support at leadership is a lifestyle.us, not .com, .us. Thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to seeing you again on another uh, Leadership is a Lifestyle um, opportunity if we have some more of these. And I'll be happy to take any questions if there are any. <laughs> See, we didn't mean if we're going to have some more of these. Of course, we're going to have some more of these. Well, that's great. So, well, I don't know. know. I can't control the video. I can't get. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm back here paying the switcher on you. So if we could do this. So if you're watching us on launchcart.com live and you want to make some comments or some questions, you just got to click on that orange button that says go comment on YouTube or go over to Facebook and comment on Facebook. And you have to get permission on Facebook, but you can comment right in there and we'll, and, and we'll see your comment. And we'll answer your question. But I want to kind of go over a couple of things, if you don't mind, Jeff. I took a I took about a page of notes, and I want to kind of emphasize a few things and bring up a few things that kind of really triggered for me. Um, and 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 one of the things that you talked about about in the middle of the presentation, where you talk about measurement. Now, me as a marketing guy, I I use my language is a little bit different. I say if you can't me if you can't track it, you can't optimize it. And you said if you can't measure it. Um, and I want to I want to plant some seeds with somebody that's that's really tough reality. OK, so tough reality. Right. 
So when we talk about measurement, and I'm going to get your comments. So I'm saying this to get your feedback on this as well, too, right? So this is going to let me say my thought process and you can comment on it. So you want to measure something, right? Because you want to optimize it. You want to make it better. You want to do, do what's going on here. Measure real, a real simple one that everyone gets is money. How much money is in your bank account? How much money is in your savings account? How much money is in your investment account? How much money you set aside for retirement? How much money have you put in your kid's uh, college fund, right? That's an easy one to measure, right? But then let's take a say, okay, let me look at my relationships. Do I have really good, strong, healthy relationships? Think about it from the standpoint is let me measure that on a scale of one to 10. Am I, am, am, if, if, if I strive to have a 10 in my relationships, where am I at? Um, uh, maybe the car you drive, the, does the car you drive, uh, show a measurement of your of, of who you are, or what you're doing. Like I drive a truck. I like my truck. And I, I don't know if that's a very good measurement stick, but uh, somehow I wrote that down. <laughs> and then and then the other one is the language you use, right? And and I want to tie that back to mindset and the negative thoughts and the negative words that maybe come out of your mouth. Right. So and and what I got from listening to you is like we have to be aware of these things that we can measure. And only once we're aware, then can we try to improve. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, for years when um, uh, when I was integral to our business, when I was a partner in, the, in our business, um, we had stats, that's what we call them, stats. And the stats were uh, how many patients did we see and what was the revenue per patient and yada, 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 and all those things. And, and those were important. We shared them with the staff. The staff uh, had input on how we could improve uh, stats. And so we were constantly, constantly measuring and, and managing those. And yet we didn't use that as a straitjacket to stop progress. There, there are boundaries for sure. And those boundaries can be set in stone or kind of looser boundaries. And I agree with you, you can control your emotions just by, and here we go again, using that word, mindset. You can control your words. You can control your actions. You can control how you take the high road. You don't have to punch down and you don't have to get in the mud with anybody. And so when you, when you look at all these things and put the pieces together, you're piecing together a lifestyle that will elevate you and elevate the people around you. And they're really, that's what it's all about. Who does not want to add value to somebody else? Who does not want to take the high road? Who does not, if they're a good person, and we assume that they all are, who does not want to be the best they can be? And when you follow the, the uh, guidelines and follow the, the, the uh, uh, dad seven rules for life and just, just take the opportunity to live and to grow and exert your own power of one that everybody has unlimited potential within them. And I think we can make a huge difference in the world, one person at a time. And it goes exponential, exponential. Here's a good comment, right? You mentioned that dad seven rules deserves its own video. <laughs> Talking from the heart. Thanks for that. That's good comment, Jeffrey. Um, okay. So, so I'm going to kind of roll into there too, with my next comments, because again, you know, we don't want to measure. We get so busy, but you really have to look at that. And I'm going to kind of jump a little bit down. Uh, you talked about in your seven rules, number three, I'm going to make a quick comment. You talked about um, competition and embrace competition. And I want to tell you that I got introduced to um, a concept um, you know, and, and I'm a capitalism guy. Like I'm an entrepreneur. I believe in capitalism. I think I think capitalism is, is, is proven that we're the best country in the world because it gives us something to compete against. But I, I had this mentor and he taught me what he called cooperative capitalism, cooperative capitalism. So I think you could have cooperative competition. And, and, and what we were taught was and I think it's just an amazing thought process is like, look, the world's a big place. There's billions of people. You can be a realtor. I can be a realtor. We can be in a competitive market, but we can still cooperate with one another, pray for one another, say good things about one another, and cooperate in this world of capitalism. And we don't have to be so competitive that I'm going to do everything I can to cut you off at the knees and bury you, right? That's not the kind of competitiveness that we're talking about. We're talking about that competitive spirit that gives you the excitement to get up and get going and to really strive to be better. 
and to strive to be better. But at the same time, we have to be striving as we get better, which is like what we're doing today, is we want to pull people with us. We want to drag you with us and make you better. And you have to have the same ass, the, the same mindset, right? Oh, I agree completely. I agree completely. You know, the um, whenever you make yourself better, you become better and you become more. And, and when you become more, you elevate, you know, the boat ri rises. And, and when you can raise that boat, the boat has room for other people, not just you. And I think that that's so important to understand is that, you know, we're not an island. People are uh, social beings and we want to be social. Uh, and the best way to be social is to uplift everybody with your actions, with your deeds, with your words and, and help them. And when they, like Zig Ziglar said, if I can help somebody get what they want, then guess what? They're going to help me get what I want. And I think that those are words so true, even though they were spoken so many years ago. Absolutely. Okay. So I got one more comment. Um, and that is, is in, in number six, you talked about always taking the high road. And, and one, of you, one, one, one of the things you said a couple of times in, in your presentation is the values that you live by. And I would like you to come up with a training on values. And I've, I've participated in some trainings on values and I value values. Um, but I know a lot of people, and maybe even I would be ashamed to say, my, like if I was to ask my daughter what her values are, maybe I haven't done a good job of teaching her this stuff or whatever, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen and show you guys something because literally I did this today, right? So let me share my screen, share, share screen. And I'm, I'm, I'm writing, Okay, I'm writing a job description to hire a marketing assistant. Okay, I'm writing a job description for a marketing assistant. The last thing on my expectations, so to be a full-time employee, to spend the necessary time the next few months to get up to speed, to work on the company. So I have my expectations. The very last thing in my expectations, and I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to try to, how do I blow this up? Let's see. Um, but I basically said, conduct business and support our vision based on these values, transparency, or wait, trust, faith, family, passion, respect, integrity, relationships, appreciation, transparency, accountability, and high standards. That is what I am trying to teach and create the culture in my business that these are the values that I want people that work for me and with me to love and to absorb and to be in. And I tell you what, if you haven't really spent this exercise of values, I think everyone should start there. You should sit and go, what are the ideal values that I believe in? And then measure yourself. Are you living those values? Because I'm telling you, one thing I was taught when I was taught this whole thing on values is you will never be happy and feel satisfied if you have a set of values that you're not living. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, the second presentation I've been working on for quite a while is uh, is titled uh, Character Traits and uh, Character Traits Values. And uh, I talk about the inverted character pyramid. And uh, it's just it's just a, a, a fun lesson. Um, but it talks about and it challenges all to become better and, and to understand what values are integral to your success. Yeah. No, it's really, really critical. And you know what? Some of this stuff is just so simple, but yet we overlook it. We're too busy. We got too many kids. And and I'm guilty. I'm, I'm speaking to myself. So I'm not saying I'm not, I got it all figured out. But I, I'm, you're, we're always trying to talk to ourselves and, and to meet these things and do this stuff. Um, and then I want to, I want to, I want to bring up one more really cool story that when you said this, it actually got chills because it brought back a memory to me that got chills. And I had this mentor. His name was Jim Brogan. And Jim Brogan was a basketball coach. He actually played for the Los Angeles Clippers back in the day of Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and back oh, in those wow. days. Mm -hmm. And when I, I I got I went to take my kids to play basketball for, you know, like, you know, the school or club sports or whatever it was. And they said, Well, would you like to coach? I said, Oh no, I I 
I don't even know how to play basketball. I never played basketball. I don't know the rules, nothing. They said, great, we're signing you up. Like, no, no, no. I said, I don't want to. I, I don't know how. I don't know the rules. And so we really need coaches. We want you to coach. You, you have a pulse. <laughs> right. So I, I, I did that. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm like, okay. And I found Jim Brogan. And, and I went to him. And he's like, oh, we have to meet. We have to meet. And he sat me down. He spent a 45-minute speech with me nonstop, didn't, didn't take a breath, wouldn't let me say a word. And the, 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 the synopsis of the story was, you are going to be spending more time with these children than their parents do. Because you're going to be coaching them a couple hours a day, two or three or four times a week. And a lot of parents don't even spend that kind of time with their kids. You have the ability to make an impact in their lives that no one can compete with. And if you don't take this seriously, I want you to call him up right now and tell him you're not going to be a coach. And he like hammered this home to me and couldn't believe it. And then he said what you said, which was gave me the chills. He said, let it begin with you. And you said, let it begin with me. Right. But he was pointing to me. He said, let it begin with you. But he, he was saying, let it begin with me. Right. So you were putting it in the first person. And, and Jim Brogan, here's an example of Jim Brogan. You're walking down the street with Jim Brogan and there's a piece of trash on the street. He picks up that piece of trash, carries it to the next trash can, dumps it in the trash can. And you're looking at him, and he looks at you and says, let it be me. There you go. And it's like, dude, it's like such, it's so powerful <laughs> when you put this into perspective and you put it into work. It's like, what can you do today to start with you to make an impact on your life, your family, your relationships, whatever? So anyway, I want to share that story about Jim Brogan because I thought it really fit. And, 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 and really, and if you're ever going to be a coach, maybe I need that. Maybe I need to do a video on how to be a coach. Cause I, I, I became a really, really good coach. I took it very, very seriously. Well, one of the um, things that, um, uh, that, that I said to myself for probably the first 30 to 35 years of, uh, marriage to my wife, Marsha, is that I looked at myself in the mirror every morning and I said, what am I going to do today, today to make the retirement of my wife and me? as good as it possibly can be. And I said that for 30 some years. And the reason for that is the commitment level that I have for her and her safety and uh, my safety too, and, uh, and you know, uh, financial security was so important that I had to utter those words to myself every day. And, um, you know, I don't do that anymore because, you know, we're at a, we're at a good place now. Uh, but at the same time, I think that th that type of, of uh, you know, passion that you have for whatever, for whatever subject it is, I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, we, we can just learn how to do that and, and, you know, make a funnel of that passion and, and just, just stream it out, stream it out. Yeah, very cool. Okay, here's our here's our, our one, you know, we had a lot of comments, but here's our first question. So I'm gonna let you answer the first question. And then again, I guess because I'm the host, I just get to participate. So, <laughs> so, so, do you have any suggestions for entrepreneurs who have zero dollars to start and no social media following? Can we make our first sale with no money? So again, how would you answer that? Well, I would say, um, you know, the uh, the only place you can go is up. And if you develop a skill set and if you have a product that's worthwhile, something that's unique, something that you can demonstrate in the marketplace to add value, then your first sale is only minutes away. And, and there, you, there you have your seed money. Story after story after story, I've heard people who have, uh, you know, risen to the top and then for whatever reason have fallen on hard times and they find a way to claw themselves back or people with no money. Uh, in a later uh, talk, I will tell you about a little bit more about my personal story. And, um, you know, there were some tough times when I was a, when I was a kid. And it wasn't because I had a bad family life because we had a wonderful family life. It was more related to the sickness of my father. And, and, you know, these things, when you are at your nadir, there's only one place to go and that's up. So keep the faith, develop your school, the skill set. Um, look at the uh, six rules for leadership. Look, look at dad's seven rules and, um, and go for it. And I think that you'll be, you'll be fine. Okay. So now let me answer that. Cause I'm the marketing sales guy, right? So, so, and, and, and you're obviously a launch cart customer sounds like, and you're trying to do the e-commerce thing. So the first thing is that mindset to believe you can, right? It's like that little train that thought he could, he could, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you can't. 
You're right either way, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so and, and think about this. This is, Jeff is a living example of this. Again, I'm going to share my screen real quick. And you're going to see here's leadership as a lifestyle. Jeff doesn't have any social media following. Jeff doesn't have anything anything going on as far as social media following or stuff. But, you know, he's got some mentoring with me. We're mentoring and coaching him how to do this. We're helping him out. He's got a site built at our store. And now if you want to wear this stuff, and again, going back to the pitch of why should people want to do this? Hey, if you really want to be a leader and have a leadership is a lifestyle mentality, put it on your back, put it on your chest, put it on your phone case, put it on your hat, wear it. Why? Because it's a reminder that everywhere you go, everything you do, you're, you're living that lifestyle. So it's a reminder for you. Plus you're spreading that good word out there. So you can just do that. Secondly is, you know, it's like, if you go to other people's fan pages and you comment and you give constructive feedback or you give nice things, you say certain things, you start to build your following. It's work, right? But it's an asset you're building and you're following that you can help monetize you, find support for you, find people to pray for you, all that kind of stuff. So really, and, and, and if you don't like the social media and doing that kind of stuff, then maybe just the online world's not for you. But between Pinterest and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all this kind of stuff, there's just a million places that you can go to do stuff. And then let me say one other thing. When it comes to making money online, it goes back to strategy. Like what can make you happy? What can make you fulfilled? And I'm just going to give you two simple stories. If I was out there and I wanted to create an e-commerce business, I would create an e-commerce business around hang gliding because I'm a hang glider pilot. I love hang gliding. I love to fly. I think there's all kinds of cool imagery I could get for that. I know the sayings, you know, the, the freedom of flight and all this cool stuff. And I would really enjoy creating an e-commerce store to sell e those kind of products. Plus, I know where all the pilots hang out online. I know the websites they visit. I know the magazines they read. I know how to get in front of them to do that. That would be cool. But if I wanted to make money, I might have a different strategy because that's a passion project. And sure, I'm going to make money at some point, but I want to make money. What's another way to make money? And let me give you one example that's self-serving, okay? If you learn how to build launch cart stores on our very easy, simple program, and you could go build a store like this one, Leadership is a Lifestyle for somebody, and you could charge them $800 to build a store for them, would you have, would you have paid $800 for testing to build this store for you? Jeff? Oh, it's worth much more than that. Yeah, two thousand, three thousand dollars. So you can build stores on our platform and charge people eight hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, and put that money in your pocket. My twenty-six-year-old daughter is building stores for people now, and she's building these stores. She's getting so good at it. She's doing it very quickly, and she's making really good money. And it's enabling her to have a be a mom and work when she needs to work and be you know take care of her little baby. So it's about strategy and, and we're going to, and, and now that we're launch carts, got all these features coming out and we're actually up in marketing, we're going to continue to do more and more training. So just keep staying tuned, stay in the groups, get active, ask for help. Don't give up. You can do it. It can be done. And you know what? <laughs> You're only one product away. Like all these products on leadership as a lifestyle, maybe none of them sell, but all of a sudden one gets hot and goes viral. He can sell 50,000 shirts. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it over and over and over again. <laughs> well. Um, one of our one of our buddies in our community he did that he did that um, uh, he he had a shirt that was kind of targeting the African American community he sold six hundred thousand dollars worth of shirts in like a 45, 60 day period of time something like that it was incredible okay so that's kind of my answer uh, Atlantis I hope that helps you and then Scott said this is part of your talk evolve with tech okay oh and this is something dear to your heart you know who that is. <laughs> no, yes, I sure do. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to read that. I may be biased, but my dad is truly one of the best humans alive. He's a giver of knowledge and wisdom, giver of kindness, and always a giver of love. That's sweet. Nice. That's sweet. Okay. So now here's what you have to do with that now. It's going to make me a little bit of money. You're going to take that quote, get a picture of her, go to your launch cart store, and build a canvas art wall hanging that you can hang in your office. And you're going to buy it through your store for yourself, right? And I'm going to make 3% on that transaction. You have this nice, beautiful thing to hang in your wall. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Katie. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Okay, I don't see any other questions. So I want to say thanks. If there's any last questions, we'll do one last call for questions and, and one last comments. If you have any last comments, this is a good time for it. We're going on 55 minutes, which is perfect. I usually like to do these things for an hour. So we're right there. And I know that you've been a blessing, Jeff. And I know this was your first time doing it. It just gets easier and easier and easier. You've conquered a hill, right? <laughs> yeah, but somebody's got to put the word technology in my head and let it rattle around for a little bit. And I, I hope to get the hang of it. <laughs> uh, you will. You will. So, hey, if you guys enjoyed this, please like comment. We need you to comment, like say anything and comment because Facebook likes that and gives us some loves. Share it on your Facebook page. Uh, share it, share it, share it, like it, comment, subscribe to the channels, give us the thumbs up, go to Leadership as a Lifestyle. Uh, have we created a Leadership as a Lifestyle fan page yet? Have you done that? I have no idea. Oh, okay, well, that's something that's going. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Oh, Lantis is that asking, do we offer any sections for customers to leave reviews? That is a very good question. And the answer is not today, but next week. Literally, we've been working on this feature for two and a half months. It is a big, huge feature. And it's amazing. And it's got every bell and whistle you can think of. Five-star reviews and emails automatically go out and video reviews and photo reviews and uh, widgets you can place on your site. You can place one that uh, it's amazing. It, it really is amazing. So... That is coming. And that's a very nice comment from Doug. Thank you, Doug. We appreciate the comments. Like, comment, share, let everyone ever know. Oh, here's a good one. Don't worry about the tech glitches. Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, uh, before I started this, I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Thank you, Karen. So nice. Isn't this cool technology where we can show you little comments and yeah, that's switch wonderful. from screen to screen to that's screen wonderful. and do some cool stuff? I appreciate really cool everybody's technology. comment, and I appreciate everybody sticking with me through the technology glitches. And uh, I have had a blast. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope I provided value to some people. And um, I had a great time tonight uh, being selfish. And um, I look forward to the next uh, next opportunity. All right. Well, thank you, Jeff. And thank you, everybody out there. We appreciate you. Uh, spread the word for us and do what I do. Wake up every day with an attitude of gratitude and tell somebody you love them. I promise you'll have a better day. We're signing off. See you later, everybody. Take care.